Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart the Prince of Wales and welcome to an overview video for Egypt. So this is Total War Rome 2 and just like all the other overviews that I do, I will be doing this on hard difficulty. Um, the initial challenge with Egypt is normal difficulty and these are the bonuses that they have. So there are successor conflicts with plus 10% morale for all units during battle against other Hellenic factions. Alexander's Legacy, minus 20% resistance to foreign occupation. Then down here, foreign dynasty, so there's plus 25% public order penalties due to the presence of foreign cultures. Um, Ptolemaic Enlightenment, you get a 10% research rate bonus, which is very handy indeed when you want to get all the, get all the new technologies. And then naval prowess, plus 1% experience rank for Egyptian ship recruits. So of course, naval is going to be quite important as well. Objectives and victory conditions, so military victory, that's what it looks like right there. Control 85 settlements, and that includes uh, Egyptus, Italy, Macedonia, Syria, Persis, and Bactria. Economic victory, 65 settlements, Egyptus, Arabia, Felix, Bithynia, Epotus, Magna, Graecia, Tarraconesis, and Provincia. And then cultural victory, Egyptus, Parthia, Mesopotamia, Mauritania, Thracia, and Cisalpina. So there we go, there the, all the victory conditions. I'm not going to read all of this, I'm just going to drag this down slowly so you can just pause the video whenever you want to and read it if you need to. But we're going to jump straight in and start the campaign. So Egypt is a faction which I actually tried to play on Legendary Difficulty on my channel. I actually played that, I think it was eight or nine episodes I did all together, which is very fun. It's a pity I had to stop, but the reason why I stopped it was because... Um, it's on legendary difficulty, so I only had the one save file, and on top of that, I was using mods. I was using the radius mod, but what I found was it, it did some. At the time, with the patching and stuff, it, it unbalanced quite a lot of things, and I just couldn't continue the campaign. But I do know enough about Egypt to show you what you should and shouldn't do at the start of a campaign with them. Um, of course, this is hard difficulty, so some of the things that you may or may pick up in this video may not quite work in a legendary campaign. For example, in legendary. The AI may be a little bit more aggressive and you may not um, have as many turns to build up like you may have in a normal difficulty or a hard difficulty scenario. But we'll see what happens in this campaign. What I'm going to do like the other overview videos, I'm going to play the first two to three turns. Just give some tips and pointers on what I think would work, what I think is good. Go through some of the units, some of the building types and what I think a good general starting plan would be for Egypt. So that's what's going to happen. In this video so I think we are there we go go you here you can skip this guy talking objective issue so this is the first objective and just like all the other videos every faction gets this, this is a two two thousand five hundred uh, denarii reward and it's to completely control three provinces either by direct ownership or through sat satrapies and military allies so there we go we're on the campaign map now and we spawn right outside Alexandria so Alexandria there we go this is what it looks like and we actually have our first full province. We have Alexandria, Diaspolis, Myos Hormos, and Memphis. So these all make up Egypt itself, Egyptus. And that's the whole kind of province. And you can actually expand all of these buildings as well. That's the first thing. Second is the faction page. So this is what it looks like. So we are Hellenistic. We have six regions all together. We've just shown you four of them. Uh, one full province, which I've just shown you. Our capital is Alexandria. Our prosperity is moderate. And then if you highlight over these, these go over some of the things. So we are we have a 5% research rate, public order is a plus 4, tax is plus 2, and morale is plus 5 for all land. That's because we're admired. These are all the things which we saw at the faction page at the beginning of the video. We have a food surplus as well, which is good because it gives us plus 2 growth and plus 5% unit replenishment. And then the Imperium level 3, as your faction grows, so do the problems of keeping it under control. So there are some things like corruption and political actions which are of course higher up on the agenda as you can see down here as well we do start off at war with Cyrenaica and we are trading with, trading with Athens and we, are, we have actually Cyprus as a client state so these are the things which you need to be aware of so Cyprus of course starts up here at Salamis and they also have Side or Side I think it's pronounced up here they'll probably get squashed by the Seleucid Empire or by one of the factions up here that tends to be what happens so just just be aware of that. It's not really a problem. Unless, of course, you come all the way up to Jerusalem and start taking out some of these settlements, which might not be a bad idea. But you don't start off at war with the Seleucid Empire, so it's probably worth not worrying about that initially. Paritonion 
this year. We're at war with Sire Nature anyway. They hold that and they hold ammonium by here. And you actually need um, to get these settlements as early as you can. So the very first thing that I th would suggest you do is take your ship and actually blockade Paratonion. Very first move of the campaign with your units. Now as you can see we would get squashed like that. We only have two units ourselves and we're up against uh, Egyptian infantry, slingers, two mob units and of course a couple of ships. So we're just going to maintain the blockade for now. So we have no need to worry about that. I would then take this general. He has enough, look, if you have a look, he has slingers, he has Egyptian infantry, Egyptian pikemen and the general himself. He has enough with him to actually help you out over here. So we're just going to bring him into the fold and he can actually reinforce now. So that's going to be the first battle that we have. I'm not going to do that battle yet. I'm just going to go over a few more things on the campaign map. So technology. Uh, Ways of Horus would be the first one to go for. And then I would actually suggest going for, where is it, by probably Asimilitation. Asimilitation for now because that gives us the recruitment cost uh, and the upkeep cost so that will help us out because we are going to have a couple of large armies running around Egypt. Um, our other, other settlement which I haven't mentioned is, oh my god where's it gone? Uh, do, 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 I think, ah oh, Petra over here, these are the other two. So Petra, Jerusalem and then we need Hegra and Charmuthas which are here and here. I need both of these so it's up to you whether you go at war with Nabatea, it might be worth getting them early. Uh, so what you want to do probably is raise an army at Petra. There's already one at Jerusalem, but this is army is important because you need this guy to actually go against the Seleucid Empire. Because in my campaigns, they have actually attacked me pretty early on, but that is on legendary difficulty. You might get away with a few more turns on a on a weaker difficulty. Um, the other thing as well is probably your general. You may want to actually uh, change his, uh, well, replace him, I would. I would go for, oh my god, let's have a look. I don't think as much... Between any of these. This guy is not too bad. Zeal. Yasson. Yeah, I think we'll go for him. The reason why I'm doing this is because you can actually get war elephants, which I would definitely get. Get some war elephants in there. And there we go. If the Seleucid Empire comes, then they got that to watch out for. And if you have a look on here as well, we can actually get up to six armies. So we have two at the moment. One at Jerusalem and one at... Well, one to attack in Paratonion. These settlements in the middle don't really need a general, so we basically you just want to have your generals on the outskirts where you are planning to advance your kind of campaign. So Petra, Jerusalem, and then your capital, Alexandria, would be the places where I would advise. So I think an army at Petra would be wise. So we're going to raise a force. We're going to raise... So have a look. We'll go for Chabrias. And again, we can actually go for Royal Peltas. They're, not, they're a pretty good unit. They have good... Well, uh, weapon, oh, welly, welly, melee attack, weapon damage, got there in the end. Um, charge bonus isn't too good, but they have pretty decent melee defense, armor, health, and base morale. I think they've been patched, they're not as strong as they used to be, but they're a pretty decent unit. Scythe chariots as well, not too bad. But again, I think war elephants, they are so overpowered that it's worth going for them whenever possible. Just going to stick him in Petra to keep the public order fine at Jerusalem, and then we want to actually recruit some units at Petra as well, so... You don't actually have any decent units apart from, well, there's no decent units at Petra. So what you want to do is get something which can actually recruit. So expand Petra and then go for a muster field. That will give us a garrison of Egyptian pikemen. And then look at all those units which you can all of a sudden recruit. You can get cavalry, carrion axemen, Nubian spearmen, pikemen and javelinmen. So a muster field is definitely worth it at Petra. And that's what this side of the campaign will look like to begin with. Now this army here, it already has one unit of pikemen. Pikemen are much better than Egyptian infantry and always take pikemen over Egyptian infantry because Egyptian infantry are terrible. They're basically like um, desert spearmen of, of Parthia. They, they're rubbish, they're just there for fodder basically. So once you're happy, start to start um, disbanding them. For example, in this battle with Paratonion, we actually have a few of them, I think. Yeah, we have two of them here. Once you take Paratonion, you can disband them straight away. Also, it's worth a look at the mercenaries. Um... You can get elephants, although you can't at the moment, but I wouldn't bother with any of the mercenaries at this point. It's only worth getting elephants just before you're about to have a big battle. Um, if we go now to Egyptius, Egyptius, Theospolis is going to be the other place where you have a general, so we're going to actually recruit one here as well. And we're going to go for, there's nothing between them, so it doesn't really matter which one you go for. Raise an army, and again, war elephants, because they are so fantastic. Stick him in Theospolis. 
and you can actually get much better troops here with level one weapons so this is going to be our main army so basically don't bother really with the egyptian infantry unless you plan to charge them in and throw them away always go from um i'd either go for nubian spearmen or egyptian pikemen i think pikemen let's see melee attack 32 melee attack 27 weapon damage 20 weapon damage 25 Charge bonus four, charge bonus twenty four. Melee damage. I've uh, melee defense is fifty three. Melee defense is only fifteen. Armor's fifty one. Armor's forty six. Health is fifty five. Health is fifty. And then base morale thirty four. Nubian speedman fifty seven. So actually, the Nubian speedman slightly are better, and they are a little bit cheaper. Three hundred eighty compared to four hundred thirty. Ninety upkeep compared to eighty. So Nubian speedman are much better. So go for three of them to begin with. And then you probably want to get some javelin men or slingers. Uh, personally, I'd go for some cavalry as well eventually. Uh, but that'll be, that'll be okay for now at Diospolis. So they are four armies. So if we go onto the overview by here, give you an idea of what I'm doing. If I just get, there we go. So one army here in the south, that one's going to go for Ethiopia and try and take out these settlements one by one. That'll be one whole province that we can control and get income from. This army, which has come from the capital at Alexandria, is going to go into Libya and try and take out these two Syrian nation. That will give us half of Libya, and we can expand as far as there for the time being. Our third army is here. It's going to go down and try and take the rest of Nabatea, so it's another full province. And then our other army is just going to be on the defensive to begin with against the Seleucid Empire. Once the Seleucids do end up attacking Cyprus, we can swarm in and try and take some of their lands in Syria. But as you can see, that's a nice kind of overview of what our plans are, and I think that's a pretty decent one. And of course, I've still got two more slots available to build more armies if I feel I need them. But I think four is probably enough to begin with. So without further ado, I'm going to show you the first battle. So get our ships going, attack. And I, I can actually just auto-resolve this because we are now well within our rights to win. So I'm going to auto-resolve. I'm going to actually show you this one. And uh, let's see. Balance stance is the best. So we'll go for a balance stance. And we've actually taken our first settlement of the campaign in the very first turn. And then, of course, subdue, um, occupy is probably the best. An increase in rank for the Admiral, and he can stay docked at Paratonion, and then our General can actually jump into there when he has a chance. And that's our first settlement. There we go. Ammonium is going to be the next one, and we're going to go with this army then to try and take that. And we can, all, of course, try and recruit some stuff here. Although, saying that, it's not very good units that you can recruit. Again, it's only really Egyptian infantry and Egyptian slingers, so we haven't got much of a choice unless you start building stuff. So you've got to keep that in mind. You can get good units in the kind of centre of your empire, but on the outskirts you can't. We can, of course, expand some of our dwellings. We've got plenty of food, so that's fine. Diospolis could actually be expanded, and then something could be built here. Now, a public order is okay at the moment, but I think it could be better. So maybe a Hellenic culture and then public order bonus of consecrated ground would be worth it. So I would advise going for something like that because you are going to not have many troops in the centre. They're all going to be funnelling out to the borders. And then finally, for this first turn, I think we need to ch check the uh, diplomacy. So here we go. So Cyprus actually are my satrapy and we can get trade with them. So we're actually going to do that because why not? It's high chance of it happening. And try and get some money out of them if possible. So 500 is possible. Uh, 1,000 is moderate. So try 1,000. And there we go. So we've got a thousand denarii there and some trade. A fantastic little bit of diplomacy for us. And we can use that thousand now on something else. Nabatea. Now the thing is with Nabatea, I mentioned it earlier, it's up to you if you go for all them. You could actually have them as a, an ally and, and a trading partner, which isn't a bad idea when you consider the Kidri don't like you that much. And of course the Seleucids are going to be flying from the north down to the south. So it's up to you whether you stay friendly with them to begin with. In one of my campaigns with Egypt, they actually ended up... I ended up losing some battles against the Seleucid Empire. And they ended up swarming in and taking Nabatea. So I ended up taking all of Libya, Egyptus, and Ethiopia down here. But I'd lost all of Nabatea. And then I had them as an ally. Which was difficult. Because I found it difficult then to try and attack the Seleucid Empire. So it swings and roundabouts. It's up to you, really, what you decide to do. Uh, Blemies down here. We're going to be attacking. So don't want to get trade with them. Himyar. You could go for Himyar. Because they're not at war with anyone not trading with anyone so you could try and get trade with them which is also high because you have lots of different uh, resources but of course you can try and get some payment so a 500 denarii payment is likely a thousand is moderate we're going to actually push the boat a little bit and go for 1500 oh it's actually low so we'll go with the thousand 
in that case. Because that might happen. It didn't happen, okay. But then we could try a trade agreement and just try the 500. And that's another 500 for us. So there we go. And that's a good way of getting some early money in the campaign as well. So that's what we've done so far. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Sards, we could end up trading with Sards. They are a satrapy of the Seleucid Empire, so it might be worth getting trade with them. It's moderate, so I'm doubting that they'll give us money. It's low. We just try the trade. They've actually rejected it, but that's fine. And that's all the diplomacy that we can do. So I'm going to end this first turn. Oh, we forgot to do the skills. Let's do the skills. So it's another nice feature there where they actually remind you what has actually happened. So it's the ship, which has been... Uh, leveled up and I'm gonna go for plus one zeal and I'm gonna end the turn there up oh, in the edict of course the edict at Alexandria we haven't issued it yet so I think we're probably gonna go for uh, let's see wealth from all commerce reduce slave decline food and public orders not a bad one I'm gonna go for the tax rate for now though try and get a bit more money and then we can finally end turn so that's the first turn that's how I've played my first turn and as expected, like I said, the Seleucid Empire would actually attack me and they've declared war. Now what happens next? Look at all these allies they have. Who's going to join them? So a bunch of them have refused. So Arya, Sag Sagatia, Persia and Potheva have all declined. But Drangiana, Media and Sards, who are up here, have actually not done that. Um, which is interesting. So there we go at war now with them. Like I said, we have to prepare that settlement for them probably coming down and attacking us. And Blemies have actually offered military access, but they demand payment, which is a terrible offer. So we're going to say no, because we do plan on taking them out with our war elephants eventually. So that's what we're going to do with them. Wipe them off the map if possible. And my statesman has returned home. So there we go. Um, faction encounter Dragania and Media. Trouble Populous, Libya, and then Edict issued like we, like we just done, and then that's pretty much it for that. So, what happens next? Well, this is what happens next. Go General into the settlement to help the public order a little bit. Public order's not very good at Paratonion at the moment, so we want to get something to help that. Um, we've got a port here, so I'm looking at this, plus, minus one food. Minus one food. Public order goes down at the moment, we just get in the wealth. We actually want the one with the wealth, I think, so a shipwright would be good. We could upgrade this as well, which would help our public order plus one per turn, a civil settlement. We're not going to do that. We're just going to sit tight, and we're probably going to get some um, slingers, just, just unit of slingers, just to bolster things there. And we have to prepare for our war in the north now, so we have a spy, which I didn't tell you about in the last episode, but he can actually be used to go up and have a look to see what the Seleucid Empire have. It looks like Tyros is relatively undefended and of course we have our allies not far away as well so it's probably worth going on the offensive with our army. We can't recruit anything decent like I said although we can get some decent units perhaps mercenary camel archers but I'm actually going to be going up to the border but it doesn't appear that there's an army nearby. I'm going to send my spy around the corner and there's the main army there at Palmyra. Jerusalem, of course, I'm leaving it undefended. Petra will have another unit soon, so if I stay on the border and recruit at the border, I could actually fortify my position here and start recruiting on the border and then take Tyros when I have the opportunity. Petra, on the other hand, not point, no point recruiting units until I get that upgrade, so we're going to leave that like it is for now. So we'll concentrate on the south and Diospolis. This army can go to the border, or as near to the border that we can get it, because the settlement is here, Ptolemy Seron. And we're actually going to be recruiting this, so recruiting some units. So we have our Nubian spearmen, which are our best infantry. We probably want to get some javelins. So three of them, and then two light cav, or one light cav perhaps, and that would be enough, I would think. And we should be able to take that settlement relatively easy then. And then we have 243 remaining. I don't think we can do much with that, actually. Apart from one, maybe two units. So let's have a quick look. We're going to recruit some Egyptian infantry and that's it. So we'll go for that. We're going to be moving out from Paratonion any moment now. And we're going to click end turn once more. So there we go. That's the second turn. That's how I've done the second turn. And yeah, that's it basically for the second turn. I could probably could have checked the diplomacy to see if there's anything I could have gotten. Because things did change with the Seleucid Empire. I think the Seleucid Empire might be doing something to me because 
yes, they've gone back to Tyros, they've pulled back some units. Be great if uh, my allies can be a big help to me. And Siren Nation now actually want peace, which is interesting. They are offering me over a thousand, which is also very nice. And I could accept this, I could go for peace. I've, I've gained land, I could just keep it there for now as the border and then concentrate on the rest. If you want to play a defensive campaign, that might be the best thing to do. But I'm actually going to be rejecting this. They have two settlements that I want to take. And I think I can take them as well and, and have all of Libya under my control. So I want to push as far west as I possibly can. Alliance is broken between Sparta and Macedon. Military sabotage. Research now complete. There we go. So now we must concentrate on the rest. This army, which is relatively big can go up to the border about there we might be able to jump straight in i think i think we can actually we don't have enough we don't quite have enough turns so what i'm going to do is actually oh we can't fortify we use up too many points but as you can see if it stays like that we'll be going in straight away and taking it because they only have a garrison of five and two of them are mob units so they're not going to be a problem at all meanwhile this is going to be left relatively undefended i don't think they can get there enough in that amount of time so we should be okay there. And then I have my army down here. Where is it? There it is. Remove the horses. I think, let's see, do we have enough movement points? No, it's going to take us two turns to get there. They are recruiting quite a few units. Although the elephants do nullify that a little bit. So we could upgrade the elephants. We can just jump straight in. Trespass, because we don't give a shit. And we are going to be attacking them. And then we can, of course, get some mercenaries, which is why... This is where mercenaries could be useful, especially another unit of mercenary African elephants. One of them and you'd, you'd be set. Even the mercenary Kushi shield women would be useful, so it's worth bearing that in mind. And then, of course, we have our army up here in Jerusalem. And, of course, we can actually recruit some decent units now. Unfortunately, they've weakened my army with the spy, and I've actually only got half my movement points, which is okay for me because I'm going to be fortifying at the border anyway. And I'm going to be recruiting some more units. And now we've got a decent opportunity to get some Nubian spearmen. So get three of them. If we can get them in, we should be okay. And then we can jump in with our army and take Tyros. And this army, we can recruit some arm, uh, units here. We could upgrade this to a Perigoikoi camp. I'm not going to for now. I'm actually going to get some more units and some more Nubian spearmen. There we go. And that will conclude turn three. But I'm going to check the diplomacy before we do. Just in case we can get anything. Nabatea. Now. Now because the Slukids are attacking me. It might actually be wise to actually get that trade agreement with them. So it's up to you. Up to you. Um, I would suggest probably taking them out as early as you can. But for this um, example I'm going to actually go for trade. It's high so we know we can probably get it. And then 500. They would definitely do 500. Would they do 1000? They probably would. They could do 1000. It looks like they got quite a bit of money. So we'll go for a bit more. 1,500 is moderate. Okay, so propose that. And they've accepted. So there we go. We're not going to be attacking Nabatea. So that army, which is at Petra, can actually move north and help out against the Seleucid Empire. We're not going to be taking on Nabatea. We've made that decision. And then there we go. So at the moment, it's looking pretty good. We're actually doing a relatively fine job. We've gained some land. We've got some good plans in place to take more. So we're going to end turn, and we'll see now what turn four has in store for us. I'll probably do four to five turns in this in this example, this overview of, of Egypt. So we've gone through some of the units. We think that the Nubian spearmen are probably the best bet at this stage. The diplomacy, so Blemies are actually offering military access and military access for a payment. I say no. They screwed, basically. They know they screwed. That's why they're trying to get out of it. So it's not a problem. Military sabotage again, and it's irritating when it comes to spies. Rebellion is imminent at Libya, and the mission issued capture any settlement. So if we capture any settlement, um, we will actually get a bit of a reward by there, so which is which is nice. And we're actually going to be capturing ammonium, I think. So let's jump straight in. I don't think there's an enemy here. And look at that. We can just walk in and take it straight away. They have nothing apart from mobs. and So there we go. We're just going to auto-resolve. And we're going to go for an aggressive stance. Kill them all. And there we go. We've taken our set second settlement now. Which is quite easy. And we're going to occupy. 
and the general's increased in rank and the mission was successful so we've now got that in our treasury look at our treasury 4539 upgrade the general so we can go for we'll go for authority with him and then we're gonna have a little bit of a problem next turn with uh well with the whole kind of um public order thing so we're gonna have a rebellion at one of these settlements most likely we actually want to change that to a consecrated ground we'll take two turns but that will help our public order and they've only got Cyrene left so we'll try and take Cyrene of course they're probably going to be marching towards Paratonion now so we might need to raise a secondary army here just for the time being and we can actually do that yes on the statesman we're going to go for him because he doesn't cost anything raise an army go for the war elephants recruit and get your ass in Paratonion because if there is going to be Oh my goodness, what's happened there? I think I've actually put him on the boat, have I? No, is he gone? What on earth? I think it's glitched out, guys. I definitely did raise... I'm confused. Um, let's just double check. Ship. Ah, oh, he's by there. He's in the ship, like I said. There we go. I was wondering where he went. He's actually there. So there we go. And we can actually start recruiting some units here. So maybe some... Uh, we just get one of each, Come I think. Could we got that money bonus? We can afford to do that. And we've actually been quite aggressive against these. And now we can push them back and try and take Cyrene. Which will be a bit more trickier because it is a wall settlement. So we will need to have a lot more patience if we want to take that. Going to the south now. This army here. The Cast of Horus. He can get there this turn. So we're actually going to be... Attack in. Declare war, because why not? They haven't got no allies or anything. So they're not going to actually have um, any sort of backup. So we can just jump in and attack them. And of course they do have lots of units. They have javelinmen and archers and levy spearmen. We're going to actually encircle them. We're then going to go on to mercenaries. We're going to get one of these mercenary war elephants, because they will make a big difference indeed. And then we attack again. And we're actually going to fight this battle, so we're going to go on to Assault. I'll show you how strong these elephants could be. I could have had another elephant, actually, but I'm just going to show you how one can do, do against these. So avoid the spearmen, but throw them into everything else. And they are so powerful that you don't need to have large armies with Egypt. You can have an army like this, which is outnumbered by their garrison and their main army. But it has, it certainly has enough that it can you know, do damage and do well for us. So there we go. Our Nubian Spearmans are better than their Spearmen, so in a one-on-one -on -one fight we would win. Our Javelins will be pretty good as well. So we're going to start deployment straight away. And there's the settlement, so best way in would be probably around here. Could attack from this flank. Get the two, or get them all around here. Going to be quick about this, we're not going to be too tidy, so just grab our Elephants. Get our Nubians. Get our Javelins. Push up with everything. And um, we actually got a camera on here, haven't we? So we can have a look at the radar. If we needed to. We're going to throw ourselves in quickly. As you can see, like that. So Spearman in the front, Slingers in the middle, Elephant in the rear. Line of sight has stopped me from seeing them. They're going to be in the center, probably. If they're not, I would be surprised. Um, I, I don't think they had a garrison of ships, so they're all going to be camping there. We're just going to throw these elephants in and do our worst to them. So let's just uh, fast forward this briefly. Uh, as you can see, we can now start to see them. Tribesmen, they're not going to be a problem. So let's just send our spears into the field now. And our javelins. There we go. Fast forward. Should win this. Just, it'd be, I'd be surprised if we didn't. They have lots and lots of men in the center War once we stampede and charge in they're going to be screwed so I'm going to control locks and charge with the spearmen the javelins are in a good position now and the elephants are resting at the back they're now going to charge in as well I'm going to group lock them group lock will make them seek their own enemies Here we go. Just throw them all in. Look at that. And my javelins are in a good position to rain death upon the spearmen, but they. And my elephants are going to charge through. And this should work very well. It's a big clusterfuck, basically. But look at that. We're doing plenty of damage. 
And the more elephants will make the big difference, you would suspect. There we go. Throw them in. They are against spearmen, that's the only problem I got to be wary of. There we go. Look at that. Spearmen being decimated though. And they are shaken. Gotta be careful they don't go crazy, of course. We probably want my war elephants to go up to this part. I can't actually click on them at the moment, which is a shame. They've gone a bit mad. And they are taking my own men out. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've messed up and they are going to be taking out my own men. But you get the general idea. I'm going to go to get charged now onto my own men here. Oh, look at that terrible mess. Typical. <laughs> so this is how you don't use war elephants. So this is the thing which I've revealed in this little episode. This is how you wouldn't use them because they are not under control anymore. Although they are still going in doing damage. Who knows? You can stampede with this one. Look at the damage they've done though. They've done a hell of a lot of damage. To my own men and to theirs. And all we have left are two war elephants. <laughs> Absolute chaos. It would be quite funny if they won the battle for me, but I think there's too much too much shit being thrown at me to win this battle, and they are taking out my own men as well. So this is how you wouldn't do it, but you get the point. War elephants are overpowered, and if what I should have done, actually, was probably s s deploy them at this uh, part of the battlefield, draw the enemies in at this part, and then go in from the flanks. Because if they did go crazy, they would be hitting in their men rather than mine. But I think you, I think you get, get my point anyway. They're still actually taking out my own men. This one this one unit of war elephants. I'm just going to kill it. I'm just going to kill my unit because... It's going to cause problems otherwise. So end the battle. So we lost that battle. But look at that. 173 kills for the war elephant. They barely killed me. Look at that. 8 kills, 8 kills, 13, 31. Compared to 173. So it just shows you how powerful they can be. Maybe if I'd got another unit it would have worked. But... Like I said, I should have just deployed them from the other side of the battlefield rather than throwing everything in. They actually start the battlefield behind my lines, which was a big mistake. But we could have taken Ptolemy Theron if I hadn't made that error. But anyway, that is how you would take Ptolemy Theron, in my opinion. And that, I think, probably sums it up. So just to recap, we're going to bring up the big map here. So my advice would be to go for Paratonion straight away and then try and take out the other Cyrenation lands. That gives you... Most of a full province with Libya. Go to Ethiopia with a second army. Get some more elephants. Try and get some decent units like Nubian spearmen and javelins. And go south and take Ethiopia. Take these three settlements out. Um, optional if you want to take out an Abatea straight away. Or do it later in the campaign. In this one I've, I've actually got some trade with them. So I can keep them on my good side. Because their borders do stop these uh, guys from attacking me. Which I think are satrapies. Or up here definitely are satrapies of the Seleucid Empire. And keep an army at Jerusalem and try and make it as strong as you can because the Seleucid Empire will most likely actually declare war on you. But anyway, I'm going to end this episode here. I hope it's been helpful. I've been Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales. Until next time, goodbye.